What's up, guys? <laughs> oh man, Chris, Chris may be running the show today. Maybe you should have brought us in. Uh, I thought we thought the internet was fixed. I had planned on coming on. I had this big bit where I was going to brag about my internet being fixed. I don't think my internet's fixed. I've upgraded it. I've had a technician out. I've been told it's fixed. But Chris says I keep freezing. So hopefully y'all are going to be able to hear me. But for the most part, Chris, I think you're going to have to run the show. And then I'm just going to have to talk intermittently along the way. Yes, I think that's probably a good plan. It took all of uh, about five seconds while you were giving your spiel about how you were going to give your internet spiel for it to be all choppy and for you to be frozen on the screen. So it was fantastic. Tim Gibson, 57. What did Wes say? We don't know. <laughs> we can't really hear him too well. All good. Hey, and Matthew wants us to stop switching sides. I'm sorry, Matthew. We like to keep you all on your toes, you know. So that's what we do here at GC Live. Appreciate everybody being here. Uh, the show, of course, as always, Wes, you can say this, even if we don't have you here, you're frozen, whatever. The show is presented by Clint Hammond of Mortgage Network. A boss in terms of mortgage, mortgagenetwork.com slash Clint dash Hammond. 803-771-6933. Make sure you hit up Clint if you want to refinance. Got any home mortgage questions, refinance questions, make sure you hit him up. We appreciate his sponsorship of the show. Make sure you support him as well. So um, we've already got Travis. You guys are already informed. Does Chris have a turtleneck on? No. This is a hoodie. It does have this little, I guess it's almost like a turtleneck thing on the front, but I do not have a turtleneck on. Wes, Cardo 3, Wes on the 2G network. <laughs> I can tell if Wes is laughing or not because he's frozen right this second. He is laughing, confirmed. All right, so we're good. But anyway, all right, guys, appreciate y'all being here again and bearing with us. One day, Wes will upgrade from dial-up internet, and we will be able to have a show. Well, I wonder what happened, man. We, we had – the show did not have, we had technical difficulties along the way in like the infancy of this show in terms of just trying to like, I don't know, we're trying to figure out when to put this up and that up. And we would have some technical stuff every now and then, but the internet situations, I went through a spell recently. Now it's Wes's turn. So appreciate everyone uh, bearing with us on that, but we hope to uh, be able to, Wes, you want me to bring you in again? Is that what this is? I said, hold on just a minute. All right. Yeah. So we're going to bring Wes in very soon. Hope everybody's doing well. Obviously, last show was on National Signing Day, the late signing day for the Gamecocks. So Shane Beamer uh, adding a couple of guys, uh, one from the JUCO ranks and Bam Scott, one from the high school ranks and Ladarian Craig, uh, Colby Fields and TJ Sanders, who were previously commitments from the high school ranks, linebacker Colby Fields. Defensive lineman T.J. Sanders, both of which joined us on the previous edition of GC Live. Hopefully you saw that. If you didn't, YouTube.com slash Gamecock Central. Go check out Wednesday's show uh, from back on Wednesday, and you can see uh, both of those interviews with those guys, um, complete with Wes's really poor internet. But regardless, go back and check those out because they were pretty uh, good interviews with those guys. So uh, recruiting class, pretty much in the books. Right. Um, South Carolina has now used 24 spots out of the 25 that they're allotted in the 2021 class. And so just a, a brief recap uh, in terms of the numbers, 11 guys, uh, 13 guys, rather, from the 2021 class that were sort of the on paper signees. So if you go to our commitment list on Gamecock Central, you're going to see 13 signees. All right, so 13 of those that ended up signing between uh, December and February. Then uh, seven transfers, unprecedented number for the Gamecocks, transfers from a variety of spots. All those guys are on campus now uh, working out with the team, including Jason Brown and E.J. Jenkins from St. Francis, the quarterback wide receiver duo. 
most recent guys to be added to the class from the transfer portal. And then four guys from the previous roster, Adam Prentice, Kai Kroger, Mitch Jeter, and Jalen Brooks. Of course, uh, three of those guys, the latter three, all on the roster for this coming year as well. So um, that's sort of the class numbers recap. Natural question then becomes, will South Carolina do anything else with that last spot? They do have one more spot. What will they do with it? Shane Beamer was asked about that even during his press conference on Wednesday and basically said, look, we do not know yet which direction we'll go. They have some flexibility. Um, if a really good high school player, for instance, pops up late, this has been a weird, unprecedented sort of recruiting cycle. There's still some unsigned guys out there. So if, if something comes up on that front, maybe they take a look. Another thing to keep in mind, the transfer portal is not closed. It is still open for business. And so it could be, we don't know, but it could be that additional players, say after they go through spring ball in March, getting into April at their respective schools, uh, end up jumping into the transfer portal. Maybe there's a guy at a position of need that makes sense for South Carolina that they can go take a look at um, in the transfer portal. So um, we will see, you know, in, in terms of that. Um, Morgan Brown from the comments here on Facebook. Uh, oops, actually hit the wrong one. Meant to hit Matthew. Sorry. New players are impressive. To heck with how these, how many stars, folks. So, one thing to keep in mind there. And Wes, are you good now? We add you back real quick. Can't tell if Wes is good right now. Who could really say? Oh, there you go. You weren't on yet, but now you're good. Yeah, I couldn't hear you at first. Yeah. So we we're just talking about Wes. Uh, to Matthew's comment there from Facebook. Thanks for, for the comment, Matthew. Just talking about uh, basically the, the star rankings of these guys. And so obviously when you look at South Carolina's class, that, that's something I wanted to get into a little bit is sort of the class ranking breakdown. I can't remember if we covered this a lot on Wednesday, but just for an explanation because there's been a lot of discussion about this. Now, first of all, caveat, even if there was 20 – 22, whatever, high school guys in this class probably wouldn't have been a super highly rated class. I mean, it's not going to be a top 15 group. Probably not. We, we don't have any way to know that for sure because that we're dealing in a hypothetical. I mean, what what if they Shane Beamer would have come in here and landed eight four-star guys from high school and junior college? That would have changed the equation. But as it stands, like I was saying earlier, Wes, thir 13 guys on the on-paper that count towards the rankings. And so when Rivals.com – is uh, calculating their team rankings formula, schools can use their 20 highest rated players. Well, there's automatically a problem there for the Gamecocks because they don't have 20. They have 13. And so that tends to lower, you know, your point totals. And, uh, and then you fall way behind in a class. So a lot made of this recruiting class being the lowest ranked this and, and all that stuff. It is true. It's the lowest rated one for South Carolina. Again, the rivals.com era, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it's also there's also never been a class where 11 of the guys, 11 of the 24, are from the previous roster for the transfer portal. Yeah, man. So let, let's try this. And Chris, if I if if you can't hear me or I stutter again, just just kick me out, man. We're we're trying. I'm I'm on the phone now, so we're gonna try this. And I've moved positions in the house, but um, yeah, I, I mean. I, I think, and you know, we have talked about this, Chris. It, it we're almost going to have to find if the portal keeps going in the direction I, I think it is. We're going to have to find a new way to try and categorize these classes and, and quantify these classes. I think because right now, um, it, it was like like you said, if, if South Carolina had landed a bunch of four and five star guys with those final slots, you know, th does the class get bumped up a little bit? Absolutely, but for the most part. Uh, you know, I, I think if if your transfers aren't going to be counted and you're, um, you know, you're in a situation where you're taking a bunch of transfers and, you know, I, I think you look down and say, man, I really love to have those four spots that counted for this class and maybe bring in some more guys as well. So uh, that does affect the numbers. But, you know, I, I think a lot of people right now, if you look around the country, it's, it's just recruiting classes are different. I think there's going to be more misevaluations, both from a, I would say, from a positive and negative standpoint, in that you're going to have kids at schools that 
flew way under the radar. And then you're going to have kids at bigger schools that maybe had some early hype and didn't progress, but it was maybe hard to track if they were progressing as you would hope or not. So the, the portal is here to stay regardless, as we've seen, but the portal in the next few years is going to be um, revved up because of misevaluations in classes where you couldn't you couldn't go see a kid in person, you know. So, um, the, if you ask me, you know, the whole thing is going to be a mess, and you know, we'll, we'll certainly find out in a couple of years how well South Carolina has evaluated this class. But even then, man, let's be honest. Mo- most of the guys in the high school ranks that are in this class were sort of uh, inherited by by you know Beamer and this staff. So we're really going to start to figure out what this staff is made of on the recruiting trail, both from the top down, like, you know, Beamer up down to all the assistants when they're a able to start from scratch, which you kind of are for 2022 full year plus out and B when, when they're able to start getting kids on campus again. Yeah. And that, and, th- and there's the challenge because there, there's a lot of points you made there, Wes, to unpack that we could go on for a while about. And so one of them, let's take the last one first. Um, you know, the 22 class, you know, people, I think, are going to that saying, OK, it's time to you know start fresh on 2022. But the issue is, I mean, in a lot of ways, Wes, South Carolina is behind with the 22 class, too, you know, because you're stepping in, you're building a new class. Mm-hmm. You haven't had, you know, the ability. It's a completely new staff. So you haven't had these kids on campus for the past, you know, last summer, for instance, even under the previous staff, a lot of these kids from the 22 class did not have the chance to get on campus for summer camp or a game. There wasn't carryover information. I mean, and then you step into a situation where some of your top targets, for example, some in-state ones are already committed to other places or you're already way behind on those guys. And so that, that creates a pretty unique challenge for South Carolina. And then, oh, by the way, you're trying to dig into that class and try to make up some ground on some guys. Now you're having to do that completely virtually. And from our understanding, they're doing – a lot of virtual visits with guys. They're doing a good job with those. They're leveraging some existing connections from, you know, past coaching stops and and really, you know, hitting it hard recruiting. But um, they do have an uphill battle with a lot of that stuff. Now, going to the portal, I mean, this thing's been really interesting this year. We knew South Carolina would lean on it probably a good bit. I think if, if Will Muschamp was still a coach at South Carolina, I think South Carolina was going to lean on the portal a good bit, right? But um, it ended up being, you know, obviously seven guys could could even grow more, could even be more than that at the end of the day before the season. Um, so, you know, they, they sort of assess this roster. Like you said, a lot of guys are inherited. You got to consider, you know, Shane Beamer walked into a situation. I've said this so many times and it's not hyperbole. Like I'm not trying to be dramatic um, or, 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 you know, painted in any particular light, but. Shane Beamer walking into this situation as head coach at South Carolina, this had not ever happened before in college football. You know, nobody had taken over a program when he did in the midst of a pandemic with an early signing period. You know, when Will Muschamp took the South Carolina job, they had two months to build a class and it was still frantic. There's no early signing period, early signing period, COVID new class, five wins in the past two seasons. I mean, the, these this set of circumstances was just unique. It was tough. Um, and, and Shane Beamer also finishing out a year at Oklahoma as well. So lots of tough things there that had never happened. And so um, that was one reason why you inherit part of the class. You keep a lot of those guys in. You had some defection, sure. Then you hit the transfer portal hard to try to fill some roster holes. And it will be really interesting to see, you know, how the portal changes, how college football, the landscape changes for – For for the 2021 class, um, you know, a lot of seniors have missed out on opportunities just in general or maybe could have gone up a level from where they ended up signing because they weren't able to go to camps. A lot of schools like South Carolina said, we just don't know on some of these guys. So let's take a chance on not not a sure thing, but someone that you had more information on. So, you know, what will the eligibility, for instance, will the SEC pass intra-conference Is it intra or inter? Whatever it may be. SEC to SEC, conference to conference, transfers, right? Like Eric Gilbert. 
I had that brought up to me the other day. Eric Gilbert going from LSU to Florida, apparently not settled for sure. There had been sort of a split within the league as far as whether or not that'd be allowed to happen. Will it, my guess, is probably just because of COVID and all that stuff from last year. But, I mean, that, that'll really be fascinating. And, and how is the portal going to change sort of even the landscape of high school recruiting? Because it definitely did this year. Wes, I, I'm going to give my review of your – so the last time you talked – Yeah, man, so I, I think um, – Wes, you're a little behind right now. You're a lot behind, actually. Yeah. Apparently, Wes uh, had to catch up a little bit to what I was saying and then was frozen once again. So, Wes, give me a thumbs up when you think you can come back, if it, if at all possible, and we'll see. Um, <laughs> God, I hate to pile on my man, Wes. He's roasting. He's getting roasted here. All right, so, J.E., Gamecock Russ, uh, I believe they're looking at Strawn, Jordan Strawn, the Georgia State transfer as a defensive end. Mainly, they may want him to bulk up a bit and or play as a hybrid uh, I assume you mean defensive lineman, D-line slash defensive end. Yeah, Jordan Strong, I mean, good thought there. Intriguing prospect because, you know, this guy obviously, he was, he was the leader in sacks uh, with 10 last season at Georgia State, really blossomed as a prospect. But here's the interesting thing, you know, about Clayton White's defense. A lot of people have questions about, you know, how will Birch be used? How will uh, Inigbare, Sterling, how, how will Jordan Strong be used? And I think when you look at Strong, you know, really the priority this offseason for South Carolina was to potentially add a pass rusher. That was one area that they identified as being a need in the portal. Even though his team does have Jordan Birch as a sophomore who has a chance to be a breakout player, J.J. Inubare, who was a really good player last year, especially in terms of pass rush last season. Obviously for the Gamecocks, he's back for his senior year. Aaron Sterling, who can give you some pass rush pop, he's back you know, as a fifth-year senior, and so uh, that certainly helps. But they did want to add some more pass rush ability, and Strong can bring that within Clayton White's scheme. If you go back and look at some of the stuff that they did at Western Kentucky, you know, you can see that a lot of times he'll use, say, three down linemen and a stand-up edge rusher, or two down linemen and two stand-up edge rushers. On third downs, he tends to sort of get creative in terms of what he may bring with the front, with the blitzes, what coverages they play, disguising things. And so that, that'll definitely be intriguing. You know, what's the package? Uh, what's Jordan Strong's role? How much does he play at the beginning? How much is he playing uh, by the end of the season? And Gamecock, Russ, always appreciate you, man, for being a loyal listener, watcher. I'm not saying he'll come in and have 10-plus sacks, but he'll definitely help four teams on the schedule that won't be elite. He will ease in well. Yeah, I mean, I, that's obviously big for South Carolina. They're, they're going to have to make some hay with the games on their schedule, you know, that are winnable. And, and there's and there's more than just a few teams that aren't elite. There's some other games that this team can certainly win. And it's honestly way too early to be diving into all that stuff. Um, we'll, we'll certainly be covering that as, as the time goes on. We need to see this team during spring ball. We need to assess some other teams during spring ball into preseason. It's still early. Um, interestingly, by the way, Speaking of spring ball, Eastern Illinois, South Carolina's opening opponent for this season is playing their season this spring, the 2020 season, playing this spring. So uh, unless something's changed, if so, y'all correct me, but that has certainly been the plan. J.E., congrats on the new solo show, Chris. Moving on up, I appreciate you, man. J.E., always noticing the haircuts, too. Somebody joked earlier that people are uh, – that, that Wes and I – had both had got haircuts, which is actually true. Thank you for actually noticing. Sometimes people think I have had a haircut when I have not. It's typically because I just don't really do anything with my hair. However it is, it's just, it's just how it is. That's just what happens. I just let it ride, however. And somebody also joked, can't give proper credit. It was way up in the comments. But someone said that Wes had spent all his internet money on haircuts. So. Hopefully that's not true. I tell you, Wes has has made a lot of efforts, guys. He's he's trying for you guys. We don't know. We're a little bit baffled. Maybe somebody who does not like Wes, who does not like me, who does not like GC Live, has poisoned the well a little bit. We will look into that. 
Lewis Antonelli, can you ask Wes who he's got Sunday? So he might answer by 3 p.m. Yeah, see, Lewis, my concern at first, we just couldn't really hear Wes. He was delayed. The problem a few minutes ago was he was delayed and him hearing me was delayed. So I might need to ask him now so that he can hear my question by three and then maybe by 3.30 or so. Maybe by Monday's show, he can give us his pick for the Super Bowl, which will have already happened. So, all right, guys, here's how we're going to handle things from here on out. Uh, drop your questions in the chat. Free for all Friday is normally what we call this show anyway. So let's just do it. Uh, whether you're on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, actually be Periscope, not Twitter, wherever you may be watching. Uh, and if you're listening on the pod after the live show, we greatly appreciate you. And obviously, unless you're a time traveler, you cannot drop a question in that manner. But go ahead and drop a question if you may have one. And I will be absolutely glad to answer it. I'm going to peruse the comments here and see if there are um, any other ones. Mary in R26 saw a video where Jason Brown was throwing about 40 yards into a net basket. Out of about eight throws, they all went in. Yeah, I mean, it, Jason Brown, arm talent, right? I mean, really, really interesting arm talent. South Carolina is off, off, obviously uh, going to have a quarterback you know, competition this offseason. Jason Brown, Colton Gothier, freshman, Luke Doty. Um, who obviously ended up as the starter at the end of last season, all going to be involved in that. Will be really in a really intriguing storyline this spring to see what happens. David Surratt, what about the player from Navy that was offered? Good question, sir. Uh, there's Navy player B.J. Gibson, uh, who is originally from Georgia, entered the transfer portal, and tweeted something the other night about an opportunity to play for South Carolina. That's actually a preferred walk-on offer just to give that clarification, um, not not a scholarship right now. So I don't know for sure, you know, what he's going to do. There might be some other offers out there, other opportunities for him. That's one we'll continue to track. But just to give you that, uh, you know, that clarification, rather, he is a PWO offer. Steve Fail, when will Brown and Jenkins be eligible to play? Yeah, the thought is they'll be, they'll be eligible to play this year. Um, you know, with, with everything going on, um, that that's the thought. We'll have to double check all that and and make sure of that. But COVID, you know, has has led to the relaxing of a lot of rules. Obviously, the eligibility stuff from last year, the fact that if seniors come back, uh, guys that were seniors last season, if they, they come back, they scout count toward the overall eighty five scholarship limit. Lots of different stuff going on there. Brandon Langford, thank you, man, for the question from YouTube. Replacement prospect for Stockton and running back prospect. So, yeah, quarterback, <laughs> a little bit of movement there. South Carolina is communicating with a lot of 2022 guys right now. I have a feeling we're going to see more offers dispensed there um, in the coming days. Some guys we're tracking. One that I can go ahead and tell you about is Tanner Bailey out of Alabama. Uh, he's a four-star guy on Rivals.com, already has a nice offer list, Alabama, Auburn, FSU, Georgia, a bunch of schools like that. Um, and so he's certainly one to watch, but I think there's going to be some others that are going to come up as well that the staff has been communicating with. Running back prospects, you know, that that's another interesting one. I felt like we probably had a decent handle on that before the running back coach changeover, Des Kitchings. Um, some of the same guys will still be involved, but obviously South Carolina officially bringing on Monterio Hardesty as running backs coach today. That's something Wes first reported back on Wednesday that he would be the hire. So have to take some time to go through that and, you know, see his evaluations and everything as well and, and sort of gather some information. But, you know, Nick Singleton from Pennsylvania was one. Jaylon Glover um, out of Florida, really good back down there is one. C.J. Stokes from Hammond is another one to watch. So there's several guys right there. I don't know that there's one guy right now that you could pinpoint and say that's the guy. You know, that that's going to be the running back or, or the two running backs in the class. Still working through that. All right, Greg S. Hey, I appreciate the super chat, man, Greg S. Loyal listener, loyal super chatter. Much appreciate your generosity on that. Do you have one or a few diamond in the rough picks, guys on the roster that may not have played much, 
that you believe could have a big impact in 2021? That's, that's a really good question. You know, I think, excuse me, I had a cough there. I think the, the, I look at need areas when you, when you start thinking about that, you know, there's a few spots where, you know, we know Kevin Harris and then March on Lloyd are going to carry the load at running back. Right. I mean, um, quarterback, I mean, whoever ends up winning the job won't be a diamond in the rough per se, you know? So I tend to look at some spots where there's some younger players or some players that haven't done much either ever or lately that could emerge, you know? And so at some of those spots, I think you look like at DB at wide receiver, you know, looking at receiver, um, I look, is or Smith a diamond in the rough? I mean, he's a four-star guy who caught 30 balls as a freshman in 2017, right? But he has not done much since then, mostly because he had, you know, serious knee procedure. There's been some health things there. Um, he's back with the team. He's working out with them. Um, he's healthy from what I hear. So, I mean, could, could he be a guy that steps up? Possibly so. Um, I, I think that's an angle to watch. Then you got some guys like, you know, Xavier Leggett on the team who, um, had some injury issues last year, but still, I think, has talent. Um, you got guys that haven't played a ton, like Rico Powers, Jakari Caldwell. You know, could those be diamond in the roughs? Maybe so. Even a guy from the incoming class, you know, defensive back like a David Spalding, had he transferred from, you know, Georgia or something, he'd be getting a lot of accolades, but he transferred from Georgia Southern. Actually, same high school program that produced Kevin Harris, unheralded recruit, but Spalding's, you know, a, a six foot two guy who, um, you know, has some length and some coverage ability, you know. So I think those are those are just a few names. I mean, certainly not all of them of guys that I think either are new, you know, or have not played much, especially lately, that could end up, you know, having a, a pretty substantial impact. Um, Corp Raider, I thought Tonka Hemingway was amazing for a true freshman D-line. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You know, you look at the edge guys for South Carolina. Um, there's some talent there. I mean, Tonka Hemingway, because of the injury to Aaron Sterling that had him out for uh, the back half, at least, of last season, ended up starting. But he was playing even then, even with Sterling as a starter, he was playing as a true freshman. You know, had the big the force fumble in the Florida game, played a lot. And I can tell you there's some people around the program last year and even still now that think that he, he's going to be a really good player. One, one comparison specifically that was made to me was that he's sort of like DJ Wanham. And if you guys remember, I mean, DJ Wanham was a, you know, what was he, a two or low three-star guy on Rivals, ranked as a tight end act, actually didn't have a big offer list. South Carolina flipped him from Indiana. There's a lot of belly aching. What are we doing with this guy? Um, he's one of the best players on the team. You know, ended up being a team captain. Plays for the Minnesota Vikings, had a real good season. He's probably going to play 10 years in the NFL. You know, really good player. Um, just real about his business, real technical. And a lot of people, I can tell you, compare Tonka Hemingway to him. Don't want to put that on him, but some people have told me I would not be surprised if he follows a career trajectory of being a starter for most of his career and then, you know, eventually getting to the NFL. Now, for this season, is he a starter? Not so sure because you've got J.J. Anibari as a senior. You've got Aaron Sterling as a fifth-year senior as well. So we'll have to see. Uh, Jalen Dickerson, all SEC, called it. Man, Jalen Dickerson, sort of enigmatic, right? Um, a guy that, you know, South Carolina under Will Muschamp, they had him in camp. I still remember when he was at camp. I think in the summer of 2016 it mo must have been was impressive, right? Offered, ended up committing. Uh, staff loved him. He got there in the spring of 2017 and was on his way to starting and, and being really good. And he just he's had so many injuries, right? There's just been so many things that have hindered his progress and his development, but he does have some talent. And so if he can stay healthy, if he can have enough of the time where he's completely healthy, where he can <laughs> develop, Right. And if those injuries, if that long history has not hampered his progress enough on a long term basis, then I think he's got a chance to be, you know, a good player. I think people forget about Jalen. I forget about him sometimes. Not that he's not on the roster, but you just sort of forget, okay, this guy still does have talent. 
he's still got a chance. So it'll be really interesting. J.E., how do you think the running back room will shake out next year? Any interaction with Monterio Hardesty yet? So Monterio Hardesty, uh, given that the announcement just happened this morning, the official release from South Carolina, from the university, uh, just came out this morning. There has not been a media, uh, like a press conference, scheduled for Hardesty yet. Um, but I would anticipate that'll probably happen next week, I would think. They'll probably uh, give an opportunity for that. How do you think the running back room will shake out next year? So so I think, you know, you look at Kevin Harris and, and then Marshawn Lloyd are probably your, your one and two or your A and B or however you want to classify it. Beyond that, it gets sort of interesting. You know, um, Zaquandre White, is he still at running back? Um, where does he factor in? Rashad Amos, you know, is a guy that has some talent. You know, needs to continue progressing, but has some talent. And then you got a Juju McDowell. You know, could could he end up um, playing some role, whether it's on special teams or, or doing something carrying the football? Perhaps, yeah. And there's Gamecock Russ. You mentioned the guy that I just mentioned, Kevin Harris, Lloyd Amos, and Juju McDowell. So, all right, guys, we are going to since we have no Wes with us today due to technical difficulties. Really appreciate you guys hanging in with us. Uh, we're probably going to J-Rock. We don't know when yet when they're holding the hardest depressor. Nothing's been sent out quite yet on that. So we will let everybody know, either here, GamecockCentral.com, both, when they have that media opportunity. But going to go ahead and cut it short. Plan right now, Monday, another GC Live. Hopefully, hopefully, Lord willing, internet fixed Wes we don't know how we're going to do it but we got to get it fixed as Wes for those of you who came in late Wes had technical difficulties internet had a technician out upgraded I mean he's putting in work for you guys on the internet front and it just didn't work out for him so we're going to try to get him back at some point you guys make sure go check out GamecockCentral.com hey if you're not a member if you're not a subscriber come join us on there uh, we, we don't do videos on the site like this, like we're doing right now, but you can come talk on our discussion forums. You, we got Ask Chris every day and come on there and ask questions just like you're doing now. I'll definitely answer them. I don't always get to everybody's questions on the chat because there's so many of them, but I will get to them on the site. Get all our inside scoop, tons of written stuff. Just started a new feature um, that inside the class, we have it every year, real popular. Uh, just rolled out the quarterbacks when we go behind the scenes of the building of the 2021 class. Um, and so quarterbacks was yesterday, probably this weekend or Monday, we'll start rolling out even more. Probably going to be, there will be one for every position, one for every position. So it'd be really interesting. Tons of content on GamecocksCentral.com. If you want to subscribe, promo code Gamecocks, 50% off your first year. Outstanding deal. So come on and visit us. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you to Clint Hammond of the Mortgage Network for sponsoring GC Live. Make sure you give him a call, 803-771-6933 for all your mortgage and refinance needs. He is the man. Check out Clint Hammond from Mortgage Network. And greatly appreciate everyone joining us today. We'll see you guys on Monday.